Hey, what's going on right now? We gotta have lots of energy. Well, hello and welcome back to another Reality Check 3D Printing Video Review. We're going to be unboxing a very special treat for you. I know you're going to be really excited about this one. I'm very excited about this one. So let's go ahead and get into the box. Okay, now the one problem is I don't have any flame today and I'm, I'm all out of knives. But luckily we do have something that we can use to open this 3D printer. A 3D printed sword! Yeah! <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump right in now that we have the box ready and open up all the way. Before power on, please refer to instructions in the USB stick, okay? The printer is pretty much already going to be ready to go. This is not something that's going to take very long to put together. It comes pretty much built already the way that it needs to be. So here you can see right here the printer is in the box. It looks beautiful. We've got this black diamond glass that's built on here so that you don't need to put any kind of a PEI board. Uh, you're not supposed to have to put any kind of adhesive tape or anything like that. Uh, like I said, it's a black diamond board that they promote and it's supposed to just be really good at keeping your items sticking to it. I can tell from feeling it, it feels pretty coarse and, and it definitely feels like a material that stuff would stick to. So it's got somewhat of a mesh material on there. It's kind of cool. All right, so it comes with a small reel of white filament. That's pretty cool. This is a DIY machine. It was tested before delivery. Blah, 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 blah. We stress, blah, 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 blah. It's normal stuff, okay. All right, first let's get the printer out of the box. All right, so here we have it in two pieces. This is the JG Aurora A5 updated high accuracy printer. Uh, they've got a few different versions of this printer out there, but this is kind of the new and improved version. I really like it because it comes in, of course, a nice solid all black steel frame. It's got a really nice extruder that's supposedly got some gapless technology, so we're gonna have to check that out. As well as the fact that this black diamond board is, is really, I can tell right now, uh, high quality in the sense that it's just it's it's very well nicely put on here and and it's just it's a, it's a very cool design I've never had a printer that was quite designed like this I mean you can't even see the belts on here it, it, it's all built on the inside right here so it, it's a very fantastically made printer I can't wait to go ahead and get it put together and we're going to check this thing out right now inside the box we've got some parts here uh, a warranty card we have some more filament we have another extruder, some of the screws and cables that we need. Of course, we have a sand disk, 16 gigabyte sand disk right here, which is going to have all the information that we need, I assume. We've got a power cable right there. Uh, it's got a European power cable, so I'm going to have to switch that for an American one. A printer USB cable, and of course, some Allen wrench tools. Simple as that, right there. You just gotta put the four screws in on bottom and it's very easy to line that up. So now that we've got that, we just have to, oh, well, I gotta spin it around. All right, so step number one is just putting the base on, putting the four screws. Step number two is then, of course, just plugging the cables on the left side, which are very simple. There's three of them and they only fit in one spot. All right, so that's all three of the cables. We can take off the protection tapes. And next thing we need to do is, of course, before we plug it in, we should probably ah, put on the filament holder. So now we have the printer turned on from uh, opening the box until uh, this moment right here. It takes just about 10 minutes, not very long at all. And the printer is just, it's, it's a beautiful machine. It is by far probably the best looking printer I have. 
uh, as far as sleekness and style. Of course, this 3D printer is reminiscent to the Anycubic i3 Mega over there. Uh, if you've ever seen that one in the past, that one also has a touch pad on the front and it's a very sleek, nice looking machine. That one is, like I said, very similar to this one. The difference is this one has a much larger build volume. Uh, the build volume on here is 305 millimeters by 305 millimeters by 320 millimeters tall. So it's a, it's a very large build. Okay, so here on the front of the printer, you can see that it's got that black diamond platform, extreme accuracy, power failure protection, eh? an HD touchscreen. So it's all pretty cool. It's nice and easy to see. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it and hit the level button. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I can go to each spot. So I'm gonna go to the first spot. And here it goes. And now what I can do is I can either hit heat and I can do, of course, any heat. I can extrude it if I need to. Um, it's just a very nice and easy interface to get around in. Of course, once I want to print something, I can print it. It says no files are found. That's, of course, because I haven't put the USB stick in. So we're going to put the USB stick in right now. Okay, we've got the USB stick in the side. Now we're going to go over to print. It gives us all the different options. We can see all of our folders. We can go down. We can go up. And, of course, what I want to do is A5 Money Cat. And it's going to give me a little bar there. It's going to show me my fan, my heat bed, my extruder. And it's going to give me all the information that I need, as well as some different options. So I can actually change the filament if I need to. I can switch the heat if I need to. I've got more options right here. I can change the speed, even the fan, if I need to change those different things while it's running. So it gives you a nice, easy to use touch interface the entire time, which is just, you know, hands down better than most any printer that you're going to get, especially for this price value. Uh, not only that, but it says it does have the ability to have power failure protection. So at some point, what we're going to do is we're going to unplug this beast and we're going to make sure it does actually have the ability to protect us from power failure. So we're going to go ahead and check that out and I'll let you know how that works. So the design of this printer is certainly very interesting. As you can see, it's actually got the end stop on the nozzle itself, so that's kind of cool. Uh, it's got a double fan on the back right there, which also allows you to cool the extruder and the part as well. So over here on the left side, it's got where the filament goes into. Built into here is a filament detector. So if the filament runs out and there is none in there at all, it'll actually tell itself right here built into the extruder right there it knows whether or not the filament is in and it of course will stop the piece and prevent you from ruining uh, a misprint so this thing is just really sleek from the back here you can see the design and of course the plug goes in like right there uh, it's just such a nicely designed printer I'm, I'm, I'm loving the way this printer looks this this printer is just gorgeous it really is it's a gorgeous printer it's uh and it's printing very very nicely too with the build volume 305 millimeters 305 millimeters by 320 millimeters uh, it's got such a great size to it too so for this kind of a build quality and for this price range i'm really excited to say uh you can't go wrong with it and uh easily gonna be one of my more favorite printers and if you look at the sides here the sides have this interesting kind of uh detail in there it, it's just it, it looks really really nice so I'm 
Okay, so as you're printing, you can go into the options and you have the ability to change the filament. You also can change the heat if you need to. You can change the fan or the speed of the print. You can also pause or, of course, stop the print if you need to. Okay, so we've taken a look at some of the menu items right there, but uh, another feature with this printer that we haven't really talked about is it does also have wireless built into it. It has its own Wi-Fi that it sends out and the signal that you can connect to. We need to check out that feature probably in a later video. Um, two other features that it says that it has is, of course, it, if, if it runs out of filament, it's got filament detection, so it knows. Also, if it uh, loses power, it's supposed to actually come back and reboot from where it left off. So here it's running right now, and I'm actually going to go ahead and unplug the power as if somebody stopped the switch, or let's just say like you had a power outage in the house. And then we're going to see if we can turn the printer back on and continue printing with it. So let's check it out right now. So you can see right here. All right. Actually, go ahead and just come around and look the back. Okay, so it's printing right now, and we're just gonna unplug it. We're just gonna unplug it. Here we go. So, sorry, printer. Boom. Unplugged. Unplugged. Just right in the middle. Sad. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna plug it back in now. Good. All right, plugging it back in. Plug, plug, plugging it back in. All right. Now let's go back to the front. All right. So now the printer says no files found. Check the file system configuration. Okay, I'll say confirm. And over here it says resume. Well, I'm not really sure. Let's just hit resume and see what that does. <gasps> What's that? It says 40%. It actually remembers where I was. And right now it's just heating up the nozzle and looks like it's going to heat up the bed. But uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like it remembers where it was supposed to be, so that's pretty sweet. It doesn't actually seem to move at all, which would be nice as soon as you turn it back on, it should just move the printer head up. Well, I guess it can't because then it would be stuck in the part, so. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, it does seem to be getting to heat now. All right, so yeah. Once it got the nozzle to temperature, it actually brought the nozzle away, which is smart because if it doesn't take the nozzle away and it tries to pull it off the part, while it's still cold, then it can be stuck to it and that can be a big problem. So then what it's going to do over here is it's going to get the bed heated up to 60 degrees. And once the bed hits 60 degrees, I believe it's going to continue printing. 60. Now let's see if it successfully goes right back to where it was before. Aha! It actually works. It actually works. You can unplug it completely, plug it back in, and it will continue printing where it left off, and it remembers everything. Super cool. It even does it in a smart way, too, so it's not stupid about it. Okay, I'm excited to say that it does work. If you unplug the device 100%, it does actually return and continue. I've also tried to flip the switch and flip the switch back on, and it still does uh, continue your print after that. So there's one other thing. We want to make sure that the actual filament detector works. So if we you know, run out of filament, we want to make sure that it stops printing so that we can actually fill, uh, fix that problem. So let's go ahead and uh, do that right now. Okay, so we're going to just cut the filament right here. We're just going to go right underneath it, and we're just going to go ahead and cut it. So, there you go. Boom. No more filament. It's going to run out. Let's see what happens. Alright, so the filament's just about to go inside there. And the filament is inside the extruder. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I can't see the filament at all anymore. And let's see what happens to the printer. Oh, so that's what happens. It just decided uh, to stop printing because it realized it was out of filament. So it instantly 
dropped up with the last bit of filament that it had. And now it's beeping at me. It says printing pause on the Papa Noel. And it's beeping. So you can hear that really loud, annoying beep. It's telling me there is no filament. So, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit the change filament button. And then we're gonna tell it So first we gotta unload, and then we're gonna confirm. So it's gonna unload it. So it's unloading, please wait. Yep. You can see it unloading the filament there right now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, hey, we're gonna put it in. And it says heat completed, please load the filament to the extruder and click confirm to start loading. So as we just put this So I just put that in there just a little bit, right? Now what I'm gonna do is... Okay, so now what I do is I hit confirm on the actual digital pad, and you'll see it's gonna start feeding the actual plastic into the machine automatically, all the way down into this system, and then all the way down into the gapless extruder, where we should see some of it start to pop out. Once that's done, we can hit resume printing. We got plenty of extra. And then we can hit back, and then we can hit zoom. Alright, he just gets back to work. All right, and today we're going to be trying some 3D printing filament from Inland, and this is a really, really cheap filament. I got this reel, it says $19.99 right there. I actually got this on sale for about $16, free shipping. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy out and try it right now, and we'll see how it looks.